Hey again, friends. Want to do another one of these walk and talk videos. It's really nice to go for a walk and talk yesterday and uh, haven't really checked the sound or the video on the previous one because I am, uh, what's the kind word for this? Prioritizing other things in my life. <laughs> um, but I do enjoy just thinking about various things and talking out loud and it's really helpful for my own process and uh, figured other folks might be interested in sort of overhearing me talking to myself. So here we go and getting outside for a walk. One of the things I try to do in my life is get outside every day. Uh, for the extremely online types like myself, it can be easy to stay at the computer or on the phone inside all day, especially if it's like winter or something like that. And uh, yeah, so I have a rule with myself, guideline, aim to get outside every day and going for a walk in spring is very easy and talking makes it even more fun. So um, yeah, I want to talk today about a phrase that's one of my favorite tweets of myself. <laughs> on Twitter. Uh, you're allowed to have your own favorite things of your own work. This underrated Tashin tweet, which is love for my brothers, power for my sisters. I want to talk about what that phrase means and how I came across it in my heart mind and how I steer by it. Um, I've talked before about there being three parts of my work, love, curiosity, and empowerment. And so this phrase is really about that. Um, when I started doing Saturday Night Meta a couple of years ago, sometime into it, a friend pointed out to me that uh, they came to Saturday Night Meta and they pointed out to me that the majority of folks that were attending were men. Uh, men, something like 25 to 35, a demographic, you could say, uh, which is which is really terms that I don't tend to think in. Somebody asked about this recently on Twitter. They're like, what's your customer acquisition uh, channels? And how do you think about that? Or something like that. And I was like, I don't think about people as customers. Uh, I just do my thing and people want to support me. They can, but that's about it. Um, I just do my thing. Um, however, you know, those lenses can be useful and thinking about demographics in particular, I guess, can be useful. Like, how can I serve people better from that perspective? Um, and that was such an interesting observation to me. It's like, yeah, there are mostly men at this loving kindness meditation event, which is interesting, you know? Uh, the very, one of the very first interactions I had with loving kindness meditation back in the day was through Sharon Salzberg's book and like, I don't know, I've never been to one of her events, but I kind of imagine uh, it being an older population and maybe mostly women. Um, so yeah, interesting demographic to have 25 to 35 year old men, you know, which makes sense. I'm a, I'll be turning 32 this year. Uh, yeah, 32. I've reached the age where I kind of forget how old I am. Uh, anyway. Interesting demographic for loving kindness. Men, you know, young men. And that got me thinking. And then a couple of months later, I did the first Give Your Gift cohort with Mary Bajoric, and it was two thirds women, which was really interesting. I would have thought there'd be more men that would come to that. There's only a few guys in it, and it was mostly women. And that was great too, but you know, surprise. And I was like, huh. And Wondered if partly that was because I was doing it with Mary. Uh, wasn't, you know, hard to say why. Uh, I mean, some of the people definitely found that cohort through me and through James, who we're doing it with, and with, through Mary. It's kind of a mix. But in any case, I got to thinking about that, and I don't really know. I guess I was reflecting on those two things that mostly men were coming to my meta events and mostly women came to the cohort and for empowerment 
and it kind of made, it started to make a kind of sense to me. Um, and that crystallized as love for my brothers, power for my sisters. Um, and that means a few things to me. One is just, I'm, I'm going to sort of aim to have the love work that I do be useful to men and have the empowerment work that I do be useful to women. It's not that I wouldn't teach or share loving kindness or the Brahma Viharas with women. It's not that I wouldn't do empowerment work for men. I do. Um, but sort of the ideal person for each of those things is a man and a woman. And I think this has to do basically with where we are collectively as a species and the culture that I find myself in. I've written a bit about this before, I think in my thread about, I did a thread last year of 100 opinions because I noticed it was hard to, for me to state object level opinions about things because I was worried about people getting angry with me. And some of the opinions that came out were basically about social justice in, in our culture. And I said, this is how I felt about it for some time, which is basically that the social justice movements have good assessments of the problems. They're pointing to real things that are real problems, real injustices, and at the same time, to me, my opinion, which you can disagree with, but this is my opinion, is I don't like how those movements, as I've seen, tend to uh, deal with those problems. I think they replicate the problem by uh, <coughs> sort of us and them attacking, you know, all kinds of stuff. I don't, I, I don't even really read too much about this sort of thing. So um, I don't know, maybe it's a straw man, but from what I've seen, I don't like how those uh, people deal with things, um, but they're pointing to real problems. And so um, as I see it, you know, you can kind of look at it as on the one hand, men don't tend to be able in our culture to feel their feelings or express their feelings. They're not taught how to do that. I think women are given a lot of emotional education about how to feel and express their feelings um, that men don't receive. And I feel like I didn't receive. I had to learn in my 20s how to feel and express my feelings, mostly through biomotive, but also circling. And then just iteration in relationships of various kinds, uh, how to interact with people and share my feelings. And I think that's actually kind of a prerequisite for loving kindness meditation in a way is just like feeling your feelings before you steer towards having particular thoughts and feelings. Because uh, if you have built up a built up backlog of unfelt feelings, unexpressed feelings, those feelings are almost going to like resent you for trying to feel love and kindness and that you're, you might not be able to do it at all. So, uh, just coming into contact with what you're feeling and beginning to articulate it to yourself and express it to others, act on the wisdom of your emotions is really necessary. Um, yeah. And on the other hand, women aren't empowered. There's this whole confidence that men have in our culture of like, yeah, I can take power and use power. No problem with that. Uh, that women don't tend to have. And I see this again and again all over the place. But one concrete example is uh, on my podcast. If I tip, this, this is just in general, it's just a trend. But typically, if I ask a man to come on my podcast, they will say yes. No problem. <laughs> when are we scheduling it? And if I ask a woman, you know, two thirds of the time, maybe, They'll be like, uh, I'm not sure if I have enough to share. I'm not ready. Or maybe we could do it later. Let's get back to that. Let me think about that. There's a lot more no's from women. Um, and I see this in other areas of life as well, of course. But that one's been very noticeable for me where, I don't know, almost power is there for the taking and women are hesitant to take it uh, in a way that I don't see men, you know, being reluctant to use power. Um, so I want to, through my work, correct, rectify, rebalance that situation, not by um, saying there's a problem and 
you know, trying to rectify the problem directly or attack people for, uh, you know, the, how they're contributing to the problem, but instead just uh, add in the thing that I think is good for the people who need it, make that available to the people who need it. So love for my brothers, power for my sisters. Uh, I don't need to subtract love from women or subtract power from men. I don't think that's really the solution. I think we just need more love for men, more power for women. Um, and so now actually when I meet someone, you know, I meet people all the time. And just as a rule of thumb, just as a heuristic, I th I, I'm always looking, how can I help people? How can I be helpful in this situation? Is there something that's being asked of me here? And just as a rule of thumb, as a starting place, I notice what gender they are, how they present, and if they're a man, uh, it's like, oh, is there a way I can help them to love, to feel their feelings, to express their feelings, to do loving kindness meditation, to share love with the world? And if they're a woman, is there a way I can empower her, uh, help her, assist her in living her vow? And as I said, of course, I'm still happy to share love with women and happy to empower men. I do that all of the time. But just as a guiding principle, this has been really helpful for me in how I orient towards my life work and to the people that I'm connected to. And uh, yeah, I guess it's given me some peace too. It's like an acknowledgement of the problems that we face and a solution that I am personally equipped to work on in a way that feels good rather than draining or blaming or shaming or hate filled, you know? I don't need that. I just don't need that in my life. So um, it's given me some peace and wanted to reflect on that and share it with you all today.